What's up everybody, it's Joe from Complex. We're back with another sneaker rotation video. A few months ago, I showed you a group of five or six sneakers that were in my rotation, and now there's a whole different lineup, so let's go through them right now. I'm a big fan of Nike ACG, one of my favorite sneakers of the year, Nike ACG Air Zoom AO. I've worn these all throughout the summer, into the fall, and even into the winter. ACG is great because you could beat up the silhouettes and they still keep their shape and they could take a lot, a lot of wear and tear. Even though in the summer, these were my go-to, when the winter came, I had to switch to a different silhouette, the ACG Mountain Fly Gore-Tex. This is when the unpredictable weather in New York City hits, snow, and you don't wanna wear boots this ACG model is definitely a great go-to. I like this colorway better than the black one, the all black, there's not much to it. This has a lot of details and a lot of different colors mixed in. I love the green sole. I love the hit of pink here. And this ACG Mountain Fly Gore-Tex, I definitely recommend it if it's gonna be winter where you are for the next couple of months. The next sneaker in my rotation is the Sakai Nike Vapor Waffle. I talked about the LA trip on the Complex Sneakers podcast where I shot like seven episodes. These dropped that week and I wore them in LA nonstop that week. I really wanted to beat these up. A lot of people thought that this was going to look like the Balenciaga Triple S and be very, very big. On foot, it's not as big as you would think. It's a great silhouette. I love all the Sakai Nike collaborations in 2019. The Sakai Nike was my shoe of the year and this is a really strong follow-up to that collaboration. Even though I got these recently, as you guys can see, I've worn them a lot. And to me, it's a sneaker that looks better beat up. I'm not sure how much they're reselling for, but if you could get a pair and you are on the fence for these, I can't recommend them enough. What we saw in 2020 was the Nike Dunk reemergence blow up crazy. Nike SB Dunks, the inline models, there were different colorways that were dropping. And we saw the Sambas, we saw the Brazils, we saw a bunch. For me, in my current rotation though, are these Argon Dunks from 2002. The story behind these is that in the early 2000s, the Dunk was bubbling in Japan. It really hadn't hit the States yet. What was happening is that if you couldn't really afford the Jordan 1, you went to the Dunk and you could get these very cheap. Chris Gibbs told the story on the Complex Sneakers podcast, some of them were $30. So as time went on in the early 2000s, they had these Nike Dunks that were coming to the States and this, the Argon was a standout. It was one of the first dunks to really feature electric colorways and a cool tie into season 11 of sneaker shopping when we had Jason Sudeikis on. He mentioned that these were the first pair of shoes that he ever got free from Nike. It's a pretty classic colorway. It's pretty hard to find. I found them online through a reseller who gave me a really good price on them. The shoe being so old, it's over 18 years old. They're wearing perfectly and I've been wearing them nonstop since I got them. New Balance had a great 2020 and the 992 was the model that stood out for the brand. There was a lot of great collabs that made a lot of your year end list, the Joe Fresh Goods collab, the Jown collab, the Packer Shoes collab, but it was this inline purple model 992 that was my favorite of 2020 and that is a sneaker that I've been wearing nonstop that's currently in my rotation. Release dates were a little sketchy and obscure, but the biggest thing was what shade of purple this actually was. Online, you weren't sure if this was a cranberry colorway, a maroon colorway, but in person, it's the perfect purple colorway. And again, we love all those hype collabs, but this inline 992 in purple was my favorite of 2020, and I think it's going to age very, very well. What would my current rotation be without a Jordan 4? Where the black cats I've worn non-stop and they were in the last video, and it's of course one of my favorites, this Union Jordan 4 is a shoe that I haven't stopped wearing since I got them. The story about these unions, everyone knows, photos leaked, they were met with a lot of hate, some people thought that they weren't a good design, and then as more photos came out, people warmed up to them, and then when they released, it seems like it was unanimous that this was a great, great collab. Chris Gibbs was on the Complex Sneakers podcast. There was a lot of contention from sneakerheads about the tongue, and he said that he set out to really redesign the tongue on the Jordan 4, and he stuck to his guns, but he also made the option for you to cut it if you wanted to do the classic flip-up tongue. 
I'm going to wear them and have been wearing them as Gibbs intended them to, but I wore these during multiple episodes of season 11 of sneaker shopping. The Kamala Harris sneaker shopping episode, I wore these in, and then in the Hassan Minhaj episode, I wore these, and he actually ended up buying the sneakers. It was funny because I saw him in LA uh, hour after we shot, and he was wearing the Union 4s that he bought on sneaker shopping. So everyone out there, if you think that the celebrities and the talent on the show don't wear the sneakers they actually buy, you're mistaken. He put them immediately on and undes these Union 4s. So those are the current sneakers in my rotation. I'm going to try to do these videos every few months. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the new season of sneaker shopping coming soon.